Resolution. Observation 1 of the present analysis, A's resolution, the United States Federal Government should establish rules of engagement governing its use of offensive cyber warfare. B of the plan, which we say that the United States Federal Government should establish rules of engagement governing its, rule, its use of cyber, offensive cyber warfare. I establishing that the U.S. may only engage in offensive cyber warfare in response to a cyber attack. Once again, that's a resolution. I establishing that the United States may only engage in offensive cyber warfare in response to a cyber attack. Can you make sure you one more time? It, it's establishing that the United States may, uh, we'll get to you uh, after this. So. I'm in front of twice. If anyone's protecting the infrastructure, the ACE point of the infrastructure will now the first argument is you know, that cybersecurity standards are not uniform across the United States. For now, the ACE point is that the U.S. Army Command has what they call their five pillars. They don't actually enforce these via any institution, which necessarily means uh, that it is led to world proliferation. I think these point of the Indian president, uh, Luke Hanergy, I believe is how you pronounce his name, uh, has indicated that as a result, the United States is not leading the process. They have developed their own standards. Uh, how to offensive and defensive cybersecurity, which necessarily means uh, that they are having to proliferate the status quo. The second argument is going to be that the offensive mindset of the United States uh, currently feels for its attacks. We necessarily say that Russia is probably incredibly indicative of this because offensive attacks don't necessarily come and just attack the actual but the whole group of things of hacking down the election, which is necessarily bad. But additionally, details attacks are necessarily attacking financial systems, which is necessarily bad. But additionally, we get to the form of free, uh, the form of free attacks that we've been doing. I've also led uh, to issues like Iran having to develop their own cybersecurity war from programs that are going to respond uh, to the United States threat. But the steep third argument is that the cyber attacks are coming now uh, on key infrastructure. The uh, ACE point is that the CBO was indicated the utilities are currently vulnerable with the United States as a result of our offensive mindset, specifically the fact that uh, we are targeting nations we have no way to really respond to uh, other countries in the world. Uh, we're able to use things like VPNs, which means we're just guessing whenever we try and attack a country offensively. The next argument is that the NSA has indicated cyber attacks. Are uh, an imminent threat upon the struggle to structure the United States. The ACE point is given the nuclear power plants that exist on the East Coast side. There are 200 of them against us right now, uh, which indicates this is the all line of the same system of security. Uh, they initially opted to collapse most conditions. The question of dams in California, I just wrote it uh, to attempt to tax on specific dams in California, which necessarily would cut off uh, water access to over uh, 11 million people, which necessarily could be bad for if the plan falls. The first argument is going to be the plan established rules of engagement for the United States that we will not be using uh, the rules of freedom of tax that currently exist for the status quo, which means that we will solve the question for liberalization. But the second argument is going to be that we're able to spotlight the changing in warfare practices that we necessarily say that the war of the United States is no longer uh, being off, like, being preemptive minded. There's a difference between offensive and preemptive. Uh, then we see the necessarily have to retaliatory effects, so we should be better on this question. question. Yes. What are you defining as cyber warfare? What does that include? What does cyber warfare include? Yeah, like, like there's tons of different forms of cyber attacks. There's economic cyber attacks. There's Actions military cyber Actions by a nation state or a non-state actor that would penetrate uh, uh, author, uh, what does it say? Uh, penetrating nations, computers, or networks for the purpose of causing damage or disruption. That is how we define that, y'all. Go to the internal links. The internal link is going to be talked with the first time the perception of the United States cybersecurity forces uh, prevents, the, uh, prevents all the proliferation that's occurring in status quo as a result of the offensive mind. Uh, the preemptive mindset we have right now, but the second argument, the shift uh, from the preemptive from pre to reactive is also going to be good for the United States cyber world. Uh, we're able to focus on how we respond to attacks that is always better than having to send out our own attacks like that. We don't necessarily need to be attacking people's cyber warfare in the first place. It's only a question of being able to protect our own infrastructure, which we say that we don't necessarily begin for when we say that. The third argument is after this, we're always see collapse of infrastructure which affect the most vulnerable population reaching the impact. The first argument is we see that infrastructure attacks always affect the most disproportionately affected us right now. I, those individuals who are one meal away from starvation or who need to uh, know to have water access in the first place. I hate people to go through these crops in the first place. Necessarily means that we say that this hurts uh, individuals like uh, poor rural farmers uh, throughout the United States, but especially in the Central Valley like California, which is exactly where we're from. Uh, especially in the world, we're always dealing with drought. Necessarily means that any loss of access to water, even 11%, but also the results of climate change infrastructure, then the millions of people uh, starve. Which brings us to advantage to international farmer. What? If you starve, you die. That's bad. I should have said that. Just thought it'd be all the else. Advantage to is international farmer. The ace point of the cyber warfare is li uh, lacking the international framework due to a lack of rules of engagement, a lack of leadership. The first argument is literally the wild, wild west out there. The ace point is that there are no standards enforced effectively in any country. Even the United States five pillars that we've already talked about are not actually enforced by the United States. It's just a suggestion, which means that the national solvency of the visa point is that any impact standards being asked, escalation is growing as right now because they don't have a rule of cyber engagement. Either they're both operating on different paradigms, which necessarily means that either one of them can do whatever they want, which means they constantly have to proliferate. But the second argument is that unchecked cyber warfare will continue to use the ace point. Is that the GDP has indicated that they will be able to go, uh, go against the United States at any cost because they can't actually defend against us in terms of an actual uh, military offensive strike, but they can always be able to uh, out cyber attacks more under control the tech industry as we're now with the next argument. It's also going to be something that's also going to occur for the of non-state actors like that they feel that they have to offensively attack the entities and more we threaten them, i.e. that we have uh, hacking database that I said we're going to be able to record uh, when individuals are actually within that group and they feel that, that was just a question of allowing for another Muslim registry, but in another case, there's a lot of necessarily bad, but these are the links. These are the plan establishes rules of engagement. The first argument is that we're requiring a policy of uh, not allowing violence and freedom strikes would necessarily be modeled in the international community. We've said that uh, countries like India are already looking for this from the United States, as well as China and the world, where they're able to respond to that. And they don't look how to free the United States, they will solve things. You probably think the nuclear policy of the United States right now. I think in the world, we don't first strike people that have been for one day, first strike us in the first place. But this is what allows for that to back in the first place. The second argument is about like tools of engagement, i.e., that this creates a uniform policy that countries can actually be beholden to. The five pillars don't work, and thus is the force of the planet. It's moving even more. The third argument is built over to other countries. We say that this would be covered by countries like, uh, uh, first off, by non state actors, but additionally, uh, by any country, countries like China, India, Pakistan, which we can resolve the problems of turning everything into turn links. We can say rules of engagement is critical to check for tax on the international community. 
The first time is obviously oh, shouldn't be all about the United States. The first time is the text back for the ATX of the nations. I that uh, the problem solved something that sucks that I the United States developed a uh, virus that would be able to shut down various programs. And Israel literally stole that offensive technology from us and then used it on uh, centrifuges that are wrong. How it necessarily means that that one wasn't maybe solved in war, but they see that as an ally. And other countries that are necessarily antagonists to the United States no longer have to fear us on this question. But the second argument is the rules and games will always seem to the rise of some proliferation in the world where not everyone in the United States doesn't proliferate. No one else feels like they have to because the global hedge model is not trying to go against them, which brings to the impact. We see some second second best we talk about on a global scale. I hate to question. Uh, again, we're from the starvation. Yeah, there are a lot of people starving in the United States for now, but there are literally billions starving in the other countries of the world. But initially, it's a question of targets on civilian populations. They are always the collateral damage uh, that occurs to things like cyber attacks. We never actually do a cyber attack on uh, the government. We always do either financial institutions or the various infrastructure that exists as for now, which actually means that this results in billions of people dying at uh, world starvation or the lots of critical infrastructure, including things like uh, necessarily things for uh, cleaning out the environment, which would be the first thing that we go in terms of an attack on China. Which would be but additionally, we said India is one of the most sensitive countries in the world, which means the world or we have on any of infrastructure, including power. Or water, billions of people certainly die. Let's go to the framework on bottom. Where did I go? Oh, you get the flight test. Here it is. You all sign about that, y'all. <laughs> Even the world gets true about this debate is a matter of competing ethical worldviews. Once again, they evaluate this debate as a matter of competing worldviews. The first time they feel is loose. Obviously, that doesn't actually happen. It's a question of evaluating the world people presented by the form of the government. The initiative of the government. The second argument is the ethics of worldviews. The world you've seen in the world. We understand the ethical orientation we have to accept. We have to understand the forms of knowledge that we've created. The name of the third argument is the issue of evaluating the name of the question of ethics. I in the world. You would, uh, we say that uh, the name of are key because you would just by killing one million, or killing one million people to save one million, one people would that that means could absolutely use us. The third argument is the decent moments that policy should be furnished. The first argument is the debate. It's a training ground and trying to resist it. Starting to be able to understand policy. Making how we inform the superstructure and how we inform the next argument is that we also be all policymakers. I think through binding political action, we able to understand that every single labor needs to be life That means it's also become critical in the next argument. These should first send approximate impacts. I that it's a question of resolving for proximal things. Like, we're not trying to solve for nuclear war. We're just trying to make sure people have access to food and people have access to water because that's the most probable thing that would affect them now. That's what cyber attacks are occurring on now. There has not been one that actually results in a nuclear attack or anything of that nature.
approximately impact to this, the big round, but additionally not really approximately impact to and like anything, especially at the point that you can't resolve any of this means that you don't get solvency for your affirmative. Okay. Framework. The first argument is that we have to use the base space for social acts of the divorcing ourselves from our lived in reality through yeah. fictional scenarios, the loss of state power, participation, and problematic system, and further purchase people out without ever giving them a voice, rightly getting the discussion of the private sphere is what continues violence and violence without allowing to check against activism. And this is what has continued domestic violence in many situations where they don't actually ever get a check against this. The second argument is the debate is in unique spaces because we don't actually apply passive policy, which means that this is a space for critical thought, and we have to, uh, like, we have, in order to be effective, we have to look at the critical ideas that we have. The third argument is that in is key because inclusivity forms to go on a, like, unattended. Dismal representation, but additionally, inclusivity forms of camps that don't get tended, which means that round is the only place that we can talk about this. This makes this discussion of inclusivity mandatory. The fourth argument is that the negative is a serious speech act challenging the masculinity in debate and inviting people to join coalition building to break down masculinity. The fifth argument is the role of ballot vote for the team that best provide that provides the best method for combating patriarchy and debate. Vote for the team that provides the best method for combating patriarchy and debate. Reasons to prefer. The first reasons to prefer are all the reasons why I read earlier, but additionally, this is the most proximal on the round because it's the only thing that actually affects us. Our rhetoric and our methods are the only thing that we will take out outside of debate when we leave this debate. But the next argument is that there are real effects of this. We can build coalitions and make the debate a more inclusive space, but additionally, there are people who are going to be watching this round, and there are newer debaters who are at home watching this tournament exactly, which means that we have spillover effects in the debate community and making a better future for debate. Links. The first argument is that debate rewards masculinity. The communication style is aggressive and prefers rationality over emotional appeal right of delivery or stylistic presentation policy and government are also masculine. The United States is rooted in Christianity, which normalizes men dominating women. The second argument is that women are caught in a double-minded debate in order to win you have to perform masculinity, but then you can turn around and people call you a bitch or antisocial for not actually engaging. The third argument is that women on women crime is a problem too. Bell hopes are used that are used that sexism is so deeply ingrained that there's an enemy within where we are always thought to fight for patriarchal approval, which leads to jealousy and hatred and exclusion of women. The next argument is that the opposite construction of masculinity literally is that they literally focus on the global hegemon in the United States being able to do this. This is rooted in the ability to control and dominate others and to create modeling to basically uh, like influence people to do other things. The little b is that warfare is historically combative and this construction of masculinity. The little c is that the cyber culture is extremely like masculine because women hackers is a specific coalition that gets pushed out constantly and women gamer, gamers are, all, are always ignored. The fifth argument is that complacency in the patriarchy. Um, Complacency with the patriarchy. To, like when debaters argue that discussion already happened during the solvency and framework arguments indicate that we are complacent in the system by just running normative apps and never actually challenging it. Impacts. The first argument is that sexual assault is rampant in this community. If you can see the several side line challenges that have been shutting down programs and the individual debaters that have been and coaches that have been called out, we argue that we would be able to resolve this because the hyper masculine allows individuals to think that they get a bunch of trophies and they can abuse other individuals. We should break this down so we can like so we can check back for a lot of sexual assault and start a discussion. But the next argument is that militarism also increases sexual assault in the community or sexual assault because the United States of a military oh, like has higher rates of sexual assault. The second argument is feminine flight is that women and non-heteronormative individuals join the activity twice the rate of males, of it, or male, not males, men, but leave in the upper levels of the, because of structural barriers because it takes twice the amount of work in order to actually get any recognition. The next argument is that you know, like, sorry, like this just means like reject the discrimination of debate. Alternative, sign the ballot negative as a commitment to build critical feminist alliances, sign the ballot negative as a commitment to building critical feminist alliances, solvency. The first argument is that this is an ethical radical feminism. It allows us to use things like consciousness raising where we educate and understand the structures of domination so we can order in order to combat them. The next argument is that consciousness raising can include absolutely anyone. Bell hooks argues that men should actually be included in consciousness raising because we have to educate everyone in order to combat it. The second argument is this allows for self-reflexivity because we can understand that we have an intersection of identities which means that there are points of privilege within our own identity and we have to be self-reflexive. The third argument is that this is invitational rhetoric which means that people can actually join to combat in the community and means that this allows for building feminist alliances like mentorship programs and reaching out to individuals. The next argument is that this is intersectional because Angela, or like Angela Davis says that we have to use the politics of location to look across asymmetrical relations, which means that this encompasses not only the queer body, but also um, like racial bodies because we can like, um, we can look at more than just gender. The sixth argument is that this solves the act. It's also yeah, because of the like the combative nature of the um, of the methodology of the affirmative uh, like um, constructs warfare is constant and aggressive, which means that this is a logic that leads to the never ending warfare that occurs. It allows us to take different approaches to warfare besides just masculinity. Case. Case. Um, you reserve the right to defend the status quo. True. That we do. On your case. You don't solve anything. Have you met the federal government? Have you seen what Trump has been doing? He will define anything as being an attack. Your interpretation of a cyber attack means that Trump can literally grandstand and say that literally anything is an attack. The Russian, like, the Russian can go humming into the elections could be considered an attack, which means that now we can engage in full cyber warfare of Russia means that you don't actually change anything, but additionally you just turn this because you allow for us to completely like explode this, but also here, five pillars arguments means that one, there's already an infrastructure, and two, it's not enforced, which means that you don't have any unique enforcement, meaning, meaning that you can't actually solve your app, but the next argument is gonna be turned is that we're gonna redirect money to the cyber warfare in order to bolster opposition means that you only make the cyber attacks worse on the ability.
again and just you don't do anything to change your offensive minds that means that the criticism is going to be able to solve this better but the next argument is that we will just uh, continue to attack and ostracize other people this is the logic of creating an enemy which means that we will always just construct more enemies engaging in warfare and this gives a justification to go to congress and ask for war we would argue that trump is isolating republicans who are on his side now with the health care bill which means that he will be able to target more republicans and shut them out meaning that he will get a formal declaration of war and this will lead to world war three probably means that the infrastructure will already be able to turn it out but the next argument is that infrastructure costs is that ever more spending all this is dismal which means that turn if the infrastructure collapse we would actually do something to fix it because trump can't keep popular support if the infrastructure is down which means that he will actually direct, uh, direct the proper funds on your next advantage you can't solve next argument is that no one models us china and russia have been attacking us regardless of what we do it means that they're that you literally just don't have an impact awesome
literally asking us to do this, so they'll definitely follow the framework. You just say that and they follow. Yeah, exactly. Countries are asking us to do this. Next, initiate.
you. For us, for the bad articulation, if we have the ability to, you There'll be comparison to frameworks um, but between app and egg. So I'm going to talk about the name framework first and then talk about the app framework. Um, Sorry, did I miss what case was that? I'm going to probably talk about it at the bottom. That's a good point. We'll see. Okay. Keep it here. Y'all putting words in our mouths, like, yo. The third argument that we made this, uh, the, oh, this, this position is never conditional. We never change the position, so if we just decide whether or not to go for the position of this round, the fourth argument is the counter interpretation of the affirmative must be defined to, to, to find what the con conditionality is. The affirmative must define what conditionality is. The, the, the next of the violation they do not define what conditionality is. The standard is going to be the predictable ground and bifurcated affirmative strategy. They need to be able to know what you actually have to establish what it means to actually conditional around it. more to air than men on MG theory in this specific it's impossible to win because of no backside for wealthy. Seven arguments of non negative position is conditionality, including the EMC that can kick out of an individual, which means that every single argument that happens in the base space is already conditionally made. Eight, eight, eight is the argument on the affirmative, the affirmative case conditionality with running engineering because they can come from the MG theory of the BMR, which means that they are functionally making the BMC going to be conditional in this space. The non, the non arguments that we make of that we are dispositional in this round. The death argument is that the breath is going to be better, better than death. The literally, it's the place of the focus of the the negative is saying, wait. The argument here is that we need to be able to actually check the kind of affirmative through the alternative R. Uh, oh, also, th the second argument that there's going to be no violation in this instance because we're going to be going through the alternative, which means that you can always evaluate the alternative in this space. Next argument they talk about. Oh, the last argument. It's a hard argument. It's going to be good to make. Our argument is that by spreading so out to Dallas, it's always going to be impossible for you to ever access this particular space because it's hard to make. Oh, uh, no. Cross out that argument. That's a wrong argument. <laughs> This doesn't turn inclusivity. Having different negative strategies is key. You telling us what we can and can't read in the LOC is probably going to push Telling what, what Grace can and cannot read in the LOC is always going to be really good to the, uh, the position that we're reading in the system, which means that this inhibit of lit. That means that the permutation cannot resolve this because they are literally, they're functionally having a rule of the domain space in this instance next argument uh, on the standards themselves. The first argument is not strategy. We are going for the accuracy, which means that it's not strategy in this instance. But next argument on the voter, they talk about how this is going to be turning into inclusivity. But I've already answered this argument. They talk about how we could kick the alternative. We're not kicking the alternative. But they talk about how this is uh, 
Sure, conduct comes before T. The only abuse that would happen is all the new arguments in the PMR. Every single goal. The only abuse that happens in this round is going to be all the new arguments in the PMR, which means because we have no access to backside rules, which means that the negative would always lose in these kinds of domains, which is particularly bad for the domain space next on the links. <clears throat> Dispo, can you explain that a little bit more? I we reserve the right to suspend the status quo. That's Links. technically the definition of dispositional. Anyways, go. Links. Not addressing the fourth link, which has specific links to your affirmative, is going to be damning because if we are making an indictment that your permutation always has a residual link that cannot be resolved by the permutation, which means that the fourth link, which has five, or was four. four? Which has four sub points under it means that you always are going to be evaluating this first. All of Dallas's arguments at the link level are non responsive to the specificity of the links about using the United States federal government or the necessary cyber warfare that happens within the topic, but secondarily, that the, the kind of cyber hackers are always pushed out of the NSA. Only 5% of the entirety of the NSA is women, and less than 2% of those are actually hackers within the NSA, which bought an indication that we are winning about inclusive arguments if we have to get any kind of solvency and spillover effect in this round. But the next argument they talk about how they live, we live, uh, new links. To be, they, they, this is not responsive to the second link, which talks about how women are caught in double blind and how they have to perform masculinity debate to, in order to be successful. L literally, Grace gets called the B word, which I'm allowed to repeat, but uh, every, like, in rounds in which she is considered to be too masculine in these debates, basically, this, this is what happens constantly in debate. And that, I will get you the bottom of this. This is the argument that continually happens. They're caught in a double blind. I will get you the bottom. Thank you. The, but the next argument. Uh, argument is that anyone can perform any part of the gender spectrum. We just have to look at how the like, green... Our argument is that anyone can perform any part of the gender spectrum. We need to have an ontological shift in how we approach these kind of gender spectrum which is key through the alternative and building a critical feminist alliance. This is how the alternative uniquely resolves these types of links, which leads us to the impacts in this debate, which is that we can resolve the kind of sexual assault that continually happens in this community because we are normalizing these things by voting for these kinds of permutations. But secondarily, that the militarism of the affirmative is never going to be resolved because the military is particularly bad, especially in the context of cyber warfare and the lack of women individuals who are, are in the NSA or in any kind of security. But secondly, the fourth argument is... On the impact. What do you want me to extend? Extend across the impacts, like they can't solve for the debate run or the feminine flight from the activity means that we have... Except across the impacts, which means that they can never solve for the feminine flight from the activity also... The what? The militarism impact. Oh, and also the militarism impact, which turns the case, which means that we're winning a unique link and impact. You can do... You, then we are always going to be winning on the case level of which allows for individuals to be harmed. Alternative? What do you want me to say here? On the purpose? Just... First one's intrinsic? Uh, oh, yeah, you're right. The first permutation is to be intrinsic for uh, in the debate space, but secondarily, that they're, that they're independent just as to this, per, this permutation through the link level to be in. The affirmative is a bad idea through the link level and the impact level of the criticism, then you're ever going to be writing the permutation because it includes the affirmative, which would necessarily have an individual disadvantage to it, but secondarily, they talk about inclusivity, which means that we need to include the affirmative. No, we are critiquing the way that the affirmative was started, structured in the first place, which means that we need to necessarily have these kinds of debates uh, about the debate space, but secondarily, the, the next argument to permutate the planet as a commitment to critical this slides of this shift, this rhetoric of rhetorical shift from the PNC and how this frame, which is an indication that they are not, they, they, first off, they're not, uh, Genuine to the to, to the critical feminist line, they're only doing to win the ballot, which would which turn the ballot commodification argument. But secondarily, that they per, that they no, but the affirmative is always going to be allowing this. I'm sorry, I just don't have time. I, I really don't because I have a really dry throat. I'm sorry. Thank you. But the next argument that um, solvency. So that all of our arguments on case are indicative of the status quo that like masculinity. All of our arguments on case are indicative of the status quo and not necessarily how women are pushed out of the United States government already, but the only argument that they go go for in the alternative place, realism inevitable. Yes, realism is necessarily inevitable in the state structure, but we are arguing that the debate space in the in is not realistic, not inevitable in this space because we have an ability to actually have the kind of pedagogical talks about what how what we can do to be able to change the world, which means that the alternative is critical to having this and just we have six uh, six arguments, but the, uh, the one that I really 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 need is the sixth argument about how we can solve the affirmative because the combative nature of the affirmative means that we need to be able to have a kind of critical feminist alliance in order to actually resolve the impacts of this affirmative case. Uh, case. This escalates aggression. The first, uh, the first argument that I need to go for is that these only escalates the amount of aggression that happens because we are taking reactionary politics, which means that the amount of, the amount of countries and the non-state actors would only be uh, would only be willing to get, and, and, and only commit more cyber attacks, which means that there's a, term, uh, there's a terminal turn to both the advantage about the kind of spillover effect, but secondly, that they have literally not reading any solvency about how they're actually going to be leading to this kind of spillover effect in the first place. I mean, why would countries not attack us if we have a reactive policy? 
Doesn't make sense. They're not reading specific solvency about why that would make sense. All right, it's going to be an overview, and then it's going to be a discussion about case, or sorry, a discussion about the frameworks and then the case, and then the criticism in order. Feminine, that is absurd. You're basically saying that you can't be feminine and also look for the 
about it. You can't critique masculinity and also want to win. There, like that just recreates the second language because your permutation can never resolve. But additionally, you can see the entirety of the links to your militarism and the fact that you defend the military and the cyber warfare means we have a conceded link, which is the reason why none of your permutations are going to resolve this. Also, on the alternative, you don't have enough benefits. You literally don't read enough benefit to either of your permutations. Which means that you don't have a single impact to actually go for, but additionally, the realism inevitable doesn't actually matter, and they are conceding that we can, so that we can resolve the affirmative because the aggressive action that's, that's being taken in the like Trump's action can't actually be resolved through coalition building, which means we have solvency for the uh, we have solvency for the alternative. Uh, but additionally, any residual link means that you only recreate the impacts of the criticism, which means that this would outweigh anything on case, especially when you're not winning the framework arguments that say that you get access to your impacts. You don't have access to your impacts, and we turn your case, which means that the only way to resolve it is through the alternative. Add one, add two. Then it's going to be our framework. Then the alternative links framework and impacts of their criticism. Do you need that down? Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be the condo sheet. Add one, add two. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The Trump stuff should be on the So it'll be the case in order after condo. And then it will be our framework. Then it will be their alternative, their links, their framework, their own. The main framework comes right before the impacts. Yeah. You are voting affirmative to reorient the militarism of the United States, i.e. that you came from one of a proactive and offensive attacks to a question of retaliatory attacks and the ability to be uh, not allowed to the proliferation that occurs in other nations as a result of the United States presence. I want you to comment now. On condo, there's no Arbery on this, we're not going for it, whatever. Go to advantage one. On advantage one, you are not responding to any of the specificity. We tell you right now that the United States in the status quo is a question of an offensive and matching the norm, i.e. that we are a question of the result. As you can see all the analysis as to how we reoriented the system, uh, as well as the ultimate analysis, we tell you this is a question of the impact, i.e. the impact is a question of the things of the power group, which you consider approximate because there's lectures in this goddamn room, and we all necessarily depend upon it. Additionally, it's a question of how we ethically orient to each other uh, when you buy with the question of the impacts. But additionally, you can see like the map analysis that says that countries will do this, which means we would solve for them too, which will matter on advantage two. Advantage two did not have a goddamn answer. In this debate, this is an articulation, but we're probably going to win this question. The only argument we had against the was that no one models, but you can see all the analysis, as to a Pakistan and India are literally asking for students in first place, which means they necessarily would model this, and this is all the questions about how uh, this is how math works now. I.e., we reach out to nuke you in the first place, which means that no one tries to nuke us in the first place. It is proven to work in the status quo, which means we resolve the impacts, which prevents countries like India from having a uh, deficit effect to the billions of people who rely upon uh, the very infrastructure products that exist there now. So, case should probably be a good ending when you go to friends and such. Yeah. The only argument they really have on to the question of Trump being able to grant him, you have relinked your own criticism of the war and say that Trump's simply been able to use his masculine attacks in order to be able to use that. It's the exact logic of the status quo in which you try to critique, but anything goes wrong there, right? So, cool, great. So, go over our framework. I think our framework is wholeheartedly conceded in this round. We are saying that it's a question not about the fiat actually we have, but it's a question of valuing the world right? that if we are keeping to reorienting towards the other that is necessarily good. We also want the net benefit, net benefits are a way for you to evaluate ethical determination, which means that if we have a benefit of saving millions of people or billions of people dying, that you would necessarily always refer us on this question. The go to the alternative debate. The perm two is absolutely fire on this question. Y'all, that is to do the plan as a commitment to the form of feminism that they necessarily talk about. But you can see it in all the net benefits. They literally say we don't have one. Look to the first argument. That is the question of laboratory and society ability to, to be able to provide the state apparatus with the critical allowances you've created allowing us to have a synthesis of idea and constantly be reevaluated in the state that the state comes the state functions as right now. But initially, you can see the that we necessarily said that you preclude a uh, political I mean, You literally exclude us. Last I checked, their solvency was that they would allow everyone to do this. Anybody can engage in this, but for some reason, the affirmative is not allowed to do this. This is the exact notion that we have been critiquing of your critique from the very start in the world, where you exclude people, you're not able to solve for any of the arguments. All of your arguments about how women are excluded in the main and excluded with any NSA probably have nothing to do with us in the world, where you seek to exclude us as of right now. Which means, you can always vote on this question, but initially go to the realism of inevitable argument. That's probably good because you can see the analysis as to how we have to work within state structures and able to be able to change those state structures. That, but the analysis of the fact that we've already read on this question. But initially, and finally, you've conceded the co optation argument. We literally read Angela Davis against Dr. Uh, against Dr. Bell Hooks, where she specifically says that we absolutely willing to work with the state. Things like the Black Panther Party collapse, which means there is no risk of solvency for the alternative. 
Which means, since this isn't intrinsic and this isn't severance, if the app has a good epic, I'd be able to save lives in a proximal, that is definitely a good reason to vote for us, yes? Answer the rhetorical shift argument. This is a rhetorical shift. I think we've been pretty clear from the start, y'all. We don't want to have an offensive mindset. We are not trying to gain to the status quo militarism. Rather, we see that the military should be reoriented to one where instead of attacking people, we only respond with attack. That is necessarily the epic that you've been talking about in the entire debate, which means we resolve these questions. But go to the link arguments. This analysis is new to me on this question of the NSA only being 5% women, but even so, one, that's not responsive because we're not using the NSA. We talk about how this question of the cyber command, which you have conceded, but additionally, if it is about the NSA, the fact that women are excluded in that space means we should definitely be talking about that institution, how it functions as it right now. That is probably another reason that's why the permutation is necessarily going to be uh, fantastic on this question. Your only argument on this is that uh, women are necessarily forced to do this in the big, but we see the world. Yeah, go ahead. Trying to make a link turn on the cyber part of the link would be a new argument considering it's the D point under the LOC shell, it's extended in the MO, it's conceded by the MG, like it's just not answered. The NSA is a warrant. You don't get access to like arguments against a warrant. I think that is a very specific and nuanced position. I that the NSA specifically excludes women. That is new to me, I should give respond to that. But additionally, even if that's not true, we don't use the NSA so also, I make the argument verbatim, this is the same invisibility of women in STEM, which means we should be able to talk about that. I'm sure judges will evaluate that. But additionally, we dish out of coalitions on the alternative probably proves that we're going to be better for forming the critical alliance that you have necessarily talked about, which means you don't actually have any impact on this question. The only one you're going for is the question of being able to resolve uh, things like sexual solar base space. But the more recent that you would exclude individuals, i.e. us, that necessarily means that we would never have access to your form of games, which means you uh, necessarily would not resolve this on any of the questions. But go to the framework. They didn't ditch their framework, which means they conceded Dallas' analysis. This is incredibly important. We say that you engage in the forms of masculinity that you talk about in the world where you go for a battle grab, i.e. that you necessarily like to modify it and create a dichotomy. Either that has to be you or us, which necessarily leads to the exact form of exclusion that we've been critiquing all about. This was fundamentally conceded, but the beast important of this was the question of hand -walking. And this should be the most important impact in the debate. In a world where they get to say, you engage in masculinity and you lose, but they get to engage in it and exclude us and just wipe their hands from it, that is exactly what justifies the forms of sexual assaults that happen now. I, either we're always able to shift the blame and say that we are not complicit in these systems. Only by engaging with the system, recognizing our complicity, are we able to resolve that. That's why the permutation functions. That's what you have to engage with the state. And that's why we have to have a critical interrogation, the elaboratory synthesis of the permutation. Thank you.